two and a half hours of trading left, but it does appear maybe that momentum seems to have pulled back. But there's no reason why it shouldn't pull back at least a little bit. And even if it did by, say, a tenth of a percent or a quarter of a percent or a third of a percent, it's not that it's going to be any kind of a derailing element. The stocks are up for huge. I mean, two and a half percent run for the S&P 500 just over the past week. And the technology stocks, like we pointed out, up over 5% in that same span. So as markets have rallied off of those lows and have maybe given back a little bit today, it's still a story that folks want to buy the market in certain areas like technology. The question becomes whether communication services, which has been the real battleground for a lot of this controversy over the past couple of weeks, becomes one of those places that people want to buy as well. Yeah, Matt, you know, listen, we're starting to see a little momentum in things you like, like the XLV ETF. But then we have these press conferences, news conferences, whatever you want to call them from the president, like we heard just moments ago. Can the market continue higher when there's so much political uncertainty out there, Matt? I think it's going to be very tough for it to move a lot higher from here uh, with the uncertainty that you mentioned, because you have uh, leaders, uh, in, uh, business leaders, uh, both big and small. It makes it very tough for them to make uh, decisions on hiring and, and capital spending and things like that. So I think it's going to be very hard for us to get the kind of bounce back uh, in both economic growth and earnings that the market has been pricing in, in the first half of the year. So I think it's going to be tough to really uh, take off. And, and I disagree with, uh, with what uh, President Trump was saying about the uh, China has to make it deal. You listen to anybody who spent serious time in China, whether it be on the business side or the political side, they're not going to give in any time soon in any substantial way. So I think this issue is going to be with us with a lot for a while, and therefore the uncertainty will be too. But, but that's, the, that's the great battle the market is facing right now, because Bob Pisani earlier today said 17 times earnings seemed a little rich for the markets. On one hand, Matt, you've got this China threat that could bring down our GDP by a couple tenths a quarter. But on the other hand, all these deals they, they look richly valued. You got the amount of available stocks shrinking massively through record buybacks quarter after quarter. Do multiples even matter right now? Well, I mean, that when, you, when you start questioning whether multiples matter, uh, then you start to worry about fr froth in the market. It's kind of like what we saw in the end of April when people were, were calling for a melt-up, and suddenly we rolled over and saw a 7% correction, uh, and 10% and in, in the NASDAQ. I, I think multiples do matter. And one of the things that people tend to push for is that saying, well, don't worry, the Fed's going to come in and save the day. They've already told us that they're going to uh, cut rates. The thing is, if you look at the has history of the last 10 years, uh, ever since the Fed's uh, rate, uh, uh, moves or their acts, their actual acts, rather than just their verbs, uh, verbiage, uh, has moved the market in a big way. But they've never acted in a major way until we've seen a lot more stress in the marketplace. In other words, they're, they're much more market dependent uh, than a lot of people realize. And the market really hasn't fallen as much as it has in the last 10 years before they've acted. So uh, I think that their Fed, the Fed put does exist. I just think it's further out of the money than most people realize. And therefore, again, the uncertainties that, that we face right now will cause us to uh, uh, have some rough sledding as we move through the right, summer right, months. But Matt, Matt here, here's something, I, I mean, as we talk about the way that the markets are focused on, we talk about stocks all the time. But this idea here that there's a disconnect between the credit markets and the stock market could be in play. We haven't seen real signs of stress in credit on the investment grade side for bonds or in high yield, yet the markets have pulled back and bounced back there. So there is something to be said for this idea that maybe stocks are revaluing themselves because there isn't anything overarching to fear. Well, uh, that could be true because uh, I mean, you always know, you never know what the market's going to do. However, I've, I mean, it's funny because uh, I had been cautious through the, the, the month of May. Being a former trader, as I know you are, 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 are Dom, uh, I saw it as, as a situation where the market simply just gotten way oversold. Uh, and it was more of a technical bounce so far. And yes, even though it's been a strong bounce, it's really nothing more than a technical bounce. We need to see more follow through. And if we don't get that, uh, I think we're going to have uh, some, some problems. So uh, I'm not sure sure that we fought off uh, the way uh, the uncertainty surrounding uh, the, uh, you know, in other words, the recent yeah. bounce, I think it has more have to do with the technical condition than really a change in sentiment.